All right, time to solve some trig equations. We're going to do this minus any trig identities. Um, and to warm up, we're going to do remember how to do this with quadratics. If you have something squared, to undo it, you can take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, you have to remember that you end up with a plus or a minus. Square root of 8, same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2. And so you end up with 2 square root 2. Um, if you subtract the 3 from both sides, you end up with negative 3 plus or minus 2 square root 2. Now you could approximate this. This is what we call the exact answer. Or you could approximate it. Negative 3 plus 2 square root 2 is 5. Oh, sorry. Negative 3. is negative 1.172 and if you subtract you get negative 5.828 so those are the approximate if you prefer depending on what what you're being asked x squared minus 12 equals x so we've got an x squared and x you can't take the square root of both sides here because then well, you'll have a square root of x. And so if you have an x squared and an x, you want to get everything to one side. So we subtract the x. And then factor. What we're going to be doing with trig functions is we're going to be doing the same thing. And so what you'll look at is, well, we've got x and we've got x. So what multiplies to this negative 12? 6 and 2, 4 and 3. Uh, 12 and 1, but we want them to add to negative 1. So I'm going to subtract 4 and add 3 because negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So then x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. And so x equals 4 and x equals negative 3. So now let's take what we just did and apply it sort of in, in trig equations. What is the general solution of the equation? I'll get back to what I mean by general solution here in one second. But if we try to see this as a whole, take the 1 to the other side, because it'll be a lot easier. 2 cosine of x equals negative 1. Think of this as we want to get the cosine of x by itself, because then we can do, um, we can undo the cosine by taking the inverse if we need to. So now we're saying, okay, where does the cosine of x equals neg equal negative one half? Where does the x value equal negative one half? And so if you think your unit circle, where's the x value or the so negative on the left hand side here, and where's it the short side? So I'm gonna draw this and this. I'm going to do this both in radians and degrees. So this is 120, 120 degrees, and because that's the 60, and then 60 degrees past 180, so that's 240 degrees. And the deal is, is if you think of what the cosine graph looks like, the cosine graph looks like this, and it keeps repeating in every single direction, it's going to equal negative one half right here right here, right here, right here, and every spot in between. And so we're going to add a plus 360 n, plus 360 n to both of those where n is an integer. And if we were to do it in, in radians, this would be a pi over 3 because it's a 60, so that's 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. So what I mean by general solution is there isn't just one solution. There isn't just two solutions. There are an infinite amount of solutions, and to, so to represent this, we use both of those. And then the other angle is 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And there we have it. So our next question is asking us to do the same thing, solve, but now it's telling us only give me answers between 0 and 2 pi. This tips you off that it wants the answers in radians. 
and we do it essentially the same way. So this tangent subtracted, so I'm going to move it to the other side so it's positive. Tangent squared of x. Add tangent squared to both sides. And then we take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root, remember plus or minus the square root. So where is the tangent equal to square root of 3 over 3? Sorry, square root of 3. So you have to remember, okay, that's either, that's the y over the x, and that's square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, or 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. I'm getting these from our special triangles that we had in our, in our 30, 60, 90s. This will make the 2's cross out and your square root of 3 end up on top. So we want our y to be the big one and our x to be the small one. So, y to be the big one, x to be the small one. y to be the big one, x to be the small one. All of these. And because they're going to be positive in this quadrant, positive divided by a positive, negative divided by a negative, negative divided by a positive, and a negative divided by a positive. And so we're going to have all three of those because it's plus or minus. So it's going to be pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3, for the positive square root of 3. And it's going to be 2 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3, for the negative root 3. But all four of these are answers. And so now we don't include the plus 2 pi over n. Um, in any of these, and in this case we would have included a plus pi over n because the period of the tangent graph is just every pi. Um, so it would just be, sorry, plus pi n, not over n. Um, but So in this case we have all four of our answers in between 0 and 2 pi. And that's it. Let's try another. General solution for this one. Again, so this is going to have the plus pi something. So we've got a cosine in both of these parts, so I'm going to factor out a cosine. So you get cosine of x leaves 2 cosine squared of x minus 1, because that's a cubed, represents 3 of them. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set both of these parts, because they're factored, equal to the 0, just like we did up here. So cosine of x equals 0, and 2 cosine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. So where does the cosine equal 0? Well, equals 0, where does the x value equal 0? When you're straight up or when you're straight down? So that's going to be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 which would be pi over 2 and every pi after that. So I'm just going to say pi over 2 plus pi n. So this changes it a little bit from how we did the first one with the general solution, because we're not doing 2 pi n, but this is because these happen every halfway around. And the next one. So let's add the 1. 2 cosine squared of x equals 1 and cosine squared of x. If we divide by 2, both sides by 2, we get 1 half. So where does the x value equal 1 half? Now again, we end up with 1 half, except it's cosine squared. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Where does the cosine of x equal? When you take the square root, plus or minus. And we've got square root of 1, over square root of 2, which is 1 over the square root of 2, which is plus or minus root 2 over 2. That looks strikingly similar to our 45 degree angles. And so we want plus or minus root 2 over 2. And so that happens at all the 45 degrees right here, right here, right here, and right here, because the x value is all of those. So, two things we can do here. This is pi over 4. 
3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4, 1 less than 8 pi over 4. All of these will continue to happen over and over and over again. We could list all of those and say plus 2 pi n, but all of these, if you think this is 45, 135, 225, 315, all of those are only 90 degrees apart. Separated by pi over 2. Some multiple of pi over 2n. So what we're going to do is just pi over 4 plus pi over 2n. And there we have it, our solution.